Actually, Sorry, Carter. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, well, let's let's dive right into it. See if anybody else yeah. joins us. Just shoot me, baby. Otherwise, so all right. I was actually. I don't know, man. A um, couple of resources I want to show you. So one is the, as far as the. Um, oh, the Steam camp understanding Hello. wiring. There's a thing. Uh -huh. I don't know if you saw the page, instructor exam, but in it there's a link to the wiring. Let me see. Oh yeah, it's called the D3D <coughs> Universal Troubleshooting Guide. Mm -hmm. So there we start with. Wait, where is that thing? Oh yeah, and then there's a link to the final five-minute control panel test. So you should uh, be able to go through this, but basically, let me send that link and start this there, a little bit. Oh, Jeremy, hi. So here's a link for you guys for wiring purposes, so that you master the wiring. So I put it in the chat. Yeah, awesome. I'm gonna try and wire up two more here from the other parts that I have here before. Yeah. So essentially, that's um. Like I pretty much list broke down, like this is what I actually do when I test all the wiring. It's this big mess. I test this, and all of us should be pretty much readily able to uh, take page one, which is like, huh, and then go to page two, which has like 19 wires, and then page three, where like your test would be, if you look at slide two, can you identify each wire? Like you should logically be able to like, bam, right away, do this in your sleep. Uh, slide three has the answers, one through 19. And the red ones are used in pro, so you really want the green ones for universal. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, yes it does. Um... And then I go into de like. That document, like we can put more details into the next pages there, but I basically touch and feel every single wire. So, um, yep, yep. Just to clear up any yeah. confusion on what it should be. Just, that's just yeah, that, that makes sense. It's a little hard to tell from, from the picture, but I mean, I, it's all, yes, it's all, uh, it all makes sense. Um, yep. And just, very quick no i don't think we have any we don't have any uh drawing like uh inkscape drawing like um dimensional drawings of it yet uh, though yet though right of which of the wiring of just just of, of this uh current state of the, of the d3d wiring um the current state no but there's uh i mean that's fine i i, I that's what i uh, expect because we've been changing it and um yeah, I just that's something I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna put on myself to try and draw for, uh, from this picture and from the other uh, documentation that we have to just us. Okay, uh, but are you aware of D3D <clears throat> wiring page? So let me send this link here. This is what we have from before that needs to maybe be forked and updated. So that presentation, oh, where is that control? D3D wiring, electronics wiring, yeah. Oh, uh, so on wiring. If you go to the presentation there, mm -hmm. it lists out, it does go through steppers, end stops, extruder bed, and then heat bed, extruder. It doesn't list the blower. So there's a little bit of detail on slide two that needs to be updated. Maybe we can just fork page two of that presentation and update it because there's a couple uh, refinements we made since. Yeah. Uh, but that's a good working document to start from. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, it shows the height probe on page 5, uh, etc. Yeah. But yeah, it's useful. Yeah, I did not know that this is here. This is very good. Yeah, we could maybe maybe just, like, if you want to do it, take that doc and, and uh, put on a D3D Universal page and, well, fork it first, because that's, that's, that's old from the older versions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's archived. Mm -hmm. And the last thing inspired by Jeremy, so I'm creating a list of high schools near factory farm. Ah, okay. Awesome. Take a look at that. Yeah, I just started with like everything within about 50 miles that I was aware of. And mm -hmm. Found the people I wanted to email and away we went. Now, what about if there was a district versus a school? Did you email the district or the individual school? No, I went straight to the individual career counselors, like kind of 
kind of at the school level. Yep. Um, and a few it, times got... I've been, you know, they've been forwarded to the district people, and they're the ones who usually get back to me. But I went straight to the to the counselors. How long did it take you to drop the list? A couple hours, maybe. And how how Hour much time did you spend sending out emails? Oh, I spent I spent a lot of time because I was. Um, I sent a lot of, you know, I sent a bunch of specific emails to other people, um, sent some specific emails to counselors that I had references to from other contacts that I had, um, just trying to personalize it a little bit. How much time would you estimate, just for reference? I probably, between the scraping and finding contacts and emails, I probably have eight hours, had eight hours into just getting the getting all that done uh -huh. thinking about which schools to go find and I don't know well the return on that investment appears to be at least five thousand dollars at that time so it's five hundred bucks an hour <laughs> right you have one I'm glad that's where we went with this <laughs> I thought it I thought it took longer than it should have I think you know moving forward on I've got a lot better idea of what I, what information I want, and I don't have to think about the email to write, and yeah. Because, I mean, there was a very good outcome, like the the Friday Harbor School. I mean, they basically want to camp, and they say they have like 20 students. I don't know about the details. We'll talk to them on Tuesday, but uh, if that's a captive audience, that's that's wor worth our time and worth spreading the, you know, basically we'll, we'll get that island open source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be good. We got the island and the sound of, uh, what's it called, Seattle, what is it, the sound called? The Puget, Puget Sound, yeah, yeah, there's there's like three or four big, uh, not big, but populated islands out yeah. there that the ferry system runs to, and they're, they're kind of, um, oh, they're fairly remote because of the ferry system, so it would be great for them to have some of this, you know, uh, on-site manufacturing capability oh, yeah. on the island. Well, that is good, we're taking over the steam camp scene through the Puget Sound, little islands, we start there, that's great. Okay, that's the only school that so far had a very dis very very positive response, or were there? Um, there's a private school here in, in Linden where I live that I've actually I actually met with them. Okay, yeah. um, On Thursday for an hour, and yeah. they're pretty serious, but they they needed a little bit of time to think about how they want to they want to integrate some of it into their curriculum, um, and then they also were probably going to try to run um, you know like a four or five day camp right at the end of the school year, probably in the, like the middle of June. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. So so it looks like, sorry, uh, looks like definite clear path. I mean, it's obvious. It's like high schools. Yeah. Um, like we could go to contacts with principals, but we can also do this Pretty much like in our local area, that's a good thing because then we, it's not a long investment to take a flight out there and so forth. So, Chris, if you can, I don't know if you have any time, but, you know, OSC is supposed to be doing that. And if we have any spare spare change, we, we would, you know, hire somebody to do that. We will probably like maybe, I don't know, maybe Andreas will end up doing this. But that's that's the role like what we're trying to do here would be the role of, of the, the event planner, you know, the person that gets all this going. But we don't have that person yet. So... We'll, um, we almost have them, so we'll we'll continue going. Uh, but that's it. That that's good. That's good. I'm gonna pursue that a little bit. So let's move right into the tablet. Yeah. Um. We should go to the working doc, right? So where do we start yeah. on the tablet? So I added, uh, I updated some stuff this morning from some renderings that I was I was doing this morning to to oh, yeah. demonstrate some suggestions and some, some ideas. Um, this is something I drew up quick in, in Blender, uh, updated kind of on my log and on this working document too. Wow. Um, Are you in the working doc now? Yeah, I'm in a working doc. So I, I, I have the, all the rendering stuff on my computer. I thought it might be easiest to screen share and spin around in Blender than, than some of these. Go computers. ahead. All right. Okay, cool. So I just pasted the working doc. Um, which is in the part library page. That's awesome. And let's actually, let me just talk for one minute on how we collaborate. So this is an example of an open product development process that we kind of uh, paving the way to. So on top of the, I mean, the part library is the most critical, so we can start with that. But on a part library for the Raspberry Pi tablet, that happens to be our working page. We have our work document, 
We should probably list all of our logs of people working on this up there. We should yeah. have a little scrummy up there too. So between working doc part library with like the visual history, uh, that's a great start. And then maybe uh, the standard content like working doc, CAD files, build build procedures, and then links to other stuff. That's a basic wiki infrastructure that we're using right now. But yeah, let's keep going. So Chris, why don't you share your screen? See if uh, you can give us a walkthrough. Yep. Okay, can you see the screen? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, um, yeah, so this is sort of the, the, the shape that I, I came to as I was um, working through uh, the renderings and um, uh, uh -huh. pro design progress that Jeremy was making uh, in, in terms of how things will, will need to be um, aligned in order for everything to get everything that it needs to. Uh, and also with under the design constraint of getting it to fit all in a six inch bed. So I sort of went. Uh, Along the same lines as, as he was thinking, and split um, split it in between uh, the inner components that will be printed that holds everything in place, and then out exterior components which comes um, that you know goes over the electronics and, and houses everything. Uh, rather than having one um, a, one long board in in the center, and then a, a tr traditional front bezel and back bezel that would come down as flat pieces, um, that is where I was thinking we would print them as these two separate. Uh, components hmm. so the, these are uh, just rough sketches of, of blender like that this is just uh, rough dimensional bits this would all need to be uh, rebuilt in, in FreeCAD with the full uh, uh, parametrics hmm. but I just have to see sort of how everything would come together um, if this were yeah this way basically so it's broken down right now between uh, like I said the interior and the exterior the exterior parts would print um, straight upright and slide over. Um, the interior parts would be these two uh, brackets that would be um, printed separately and bolted together with the electronics bolted to them. And then, yeah, the clamshell uh, sliding over it. As I was, uh, so the other design idea that we, we wanted to, uh, we liked was to have these uh, ports exposed and have, the, of course, the buttons exposed here as well. As I was making room for them, I kind of came around to actually really liking this blocky hmm. design. I would want to even vault it even further. Um, hmm. Definitely different from a, a conventional tablet, but it would lend itself to doing something if we uh, try like this, where uh, the angles for hmm. from the back is extra bulky, then the, the, the tablet would sit nice uh, at a good viewing angle in uh, portrait and in landscape mode. Oh. Without a without a stand, I mean, we could also have nut catches and corners and stuff for a, a added um, huh. uh, modules and stuff for things like stands. But in this design, basically, it could sit on its own as a uh, input device, output device. Um, yeah, hmm. this this angle. I mean, obviously, so this is all rough uh, rough geometry that that you would need to tweak and uh, and find the right angles and of course fitment. But yeah, that's basically what I was thinking. So uh, the assembly process would be something like uh, you would print out the parts like this, um, and uh, these two parts, uh, the two inner board uh, parts would be screwed, uh, bolted together hmm. at these two places. Um, the, these, uh, excuse me, this flat geometry piece uh, is, is flush against the back of the LCD and, and basically mm. goes around around the board components. So uh, that's that way the yeah. circuit boards can get up close to each other and would be bolted together. And then the final the final bolts through uh, here wouldn't be inserted until after the, um, two, the two shell cases were put back on. And then you would put the final bolts in uh, uh, through the four corners. That's a suggestion, anyway. Wow, oh, yeah. that's uh, sounds like a workable solution. There's, and the ports in the back are exposed still. For so the... these ports are in the back are exposed. Um, the HDMI is fine, and the uh, power to the screen solution is all works fine. There's plenty of space on the interior if it's vaulted this much. Uh, maybe even space to try and add some battery. But the thing I haven't figured out yet um, is power to the Raspberry Pi itself. Which how I figured. The power in there. How do you get to the power to here? Um, mm. Yeah. 
but this would all without any uh, extra cables or components that um, minus that that bit there. If we were doing a battery pack, um, if like if we found like you were saying an off the shelf uh, lithium ion rechargeable battery pack, we could in the, uh, elsewhere inside all this extra space uh, fit it and uh, up snug against the side of something so its charging port to be exposed while it was plugged into the Raspberry Pi still. That part I'm not exactly sh sure about, but as it as it is with this design, it should be. It's pretty easy to get in there. You would just remove the four bolts, or maybe six, and it would slide open, and you could get in there too. Uh, for example, um, well, yeah, I was going to say change the SD card, the change to, if you wanted to swap between uh, uh, Android and uh, Linux, then you could open it up and put a different SD micro SD in there. Oh wow, that's actually pretty cool, right? You can by yeah. the, by virtue of the SD card, you have different operating systems, which is a quick snap, quick swap. Yeah, you could store the extra one in here in a little pocket. You know, you could open it up, change your SD card. You could have many operating systems on there uh, as you wanted. Uh, the alternative would be uh, have another slot in the back here exposed where you could change that out and or have a little power port that is similar to this cutaway. You'd have another cutaway down here where the, where the power uh, could get in. As is, or, can we... Know. Sounds like through the ports, the opening that exists, you can get the power cable. So you you can use this wired right, wired power, with wired power. As it's as it's as this exact case is currently designed, um, no, there's not an easy way to get power in there. I would need to put a hole. Um, basically, it would be a cap. You know, there would be a slit, and you would have the. Mm -hmm. It would be tethered. It would be then a, a, the power cord would come out of a, a hole like this, like these headphones, where you couldn't unplug it from the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it would it would be a tethered, uh, hmm. you know. So it'd be like a t t desktop, um, you know, like those old t uh, picture frame uh, displays that people, you know that, that they used to make, uh, but obviously much more powerful. But yeah, it would be sit there and plugged in, um, yeah, interface. Nice. Which I would much rather be able to pick it up and move it around. Uh, but for yeah, for that it's gonna. Uh, Need either a um, a battery pack solution. Uh, the battery pack solution makes the most sense to me because if we just get away to expose the port, we're still going to have to, when we move it, unplug it from the wall and plug it back in. So it doesn't make much difference uh, hmm. if you're going to be putting it in a bag um, yeah. if if the power cord is captive. Huh. I, w I would see like since you got that that flat plane on the back side, we can just attach a battery pack through like four magnets there and just keep it there, an off shelf battery pack. Sure. And just slip a little cord and then, in there. And then you can replace that mm -hmm. you have a quick mm -hmm. yeah, quick charging external battery pack there. Huh. That would make it hot so, like you could swap out a different battery pack too. That would be yeah. that could be handy. And you could then that, that way we don't waste space in the pack and in the case to try and fit a battery right now. Um, we mm -hmm. can work on that later. But yeah, then give you the option if, if you want to have it battery packed or plug into the wall. Love it. I think that's okay. That's... Jeremy, yeah. What are yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I think it's great. Um, one comment on the wiring is I was still using the uh, one of the USB ports um, just to feed data back to the touchscreen. Um, uh, yes, so I exposed my... the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I exposed one USB and, and the Ethernet and left the other USB inside the case so that I could route it. Um, we could always solder to those pins, too. I mean, that's that's something that is fairly well documented online, um, which which pins to use. Uh, and since we're already soldering that, that uh, you know, to get yeah. the power of the board, that, I think that that would be fine. Um, just like yeah, the, the, over here. My other concern yeah, just, was... Um, from the device back to the Pi, um, you're using one of oh, these guys? Yeah, so if you look at, yeah, from the top there, the one that on the right side of the view you're looking at right now, I have uh -huh. that inside the case so that I could feed a USB into the front. <laughs> but since we're going to be doing some soldering, it's not that big a deal to, we could find the pins on the back side of the board and just uh, put our wires down there. And then how did you get? And then what plug did it go into in the uh, touchscreen? It was actually one of one of these on right now on the outside. Was it? Um, in the center of the touchscreen board, um, like right basically in the middle. There's three 
uh, probably test ports. Maybe they're factory test ports or ah, something. But they're, they're uh -huh. also solder pads, and they're labeled okay. uh, ground D positive and D negative, and those are your USB inputs or your USB data lines. So you can ignore, you can ignore this touch screen, the, uh, this extra USB port of the, on the touch screen. Yeah, and I haven't tested, but I suspect well, I don't know how it's routed. But huh. those are probably all on the same USB wiring um, circuit within that board. So you may actually be able to use the USBs on the edge of the touch screen as to access the Pi once everything is soldered together. I don't know. Interesting. Wait. Um, so you said you have or you haven't tested yet uh, soldering to these uh, DNDP ground. I, I've tested soldering to the board. That works. Um, but the other end of the cord, I just had a normal USB plug on. So I was, I had that plugged into the Pi, and then the wires were soldered uh, gotcha. to the back uh, of the touchscreen. Now, was that, su okay. was that sufficient to give you both... Wait, are you doing data and power to that? No, so there's two other test ports that are kind of in the upper right-hand side. If you're looking at the back of the board, they're labeled 5-volt uh, positive, I think, or and then yeah. the ground. Yeah. And so I ran power to those two ports off of the GPIO pins, uh, I think four and six, no. Uh, but there's a ground and a positive on the top, on the one, like around two or four on the GPIO. So I ran power from there to the screen to power the screen. And then I used the USB to do the touch screen interface, um, like uh. the data, the data side. Does that make sense? <laughs> if you go to page yeah, five yeah. or six, um, let's see here. Yeah, go to page seven in the current working document, and there's a few um, yeah. poor pictures there that kind of explain it. Okay. Should make them larger. Oh, huh. this is not not super helpful in these pictures, but. Um, okay, so you got. You got GPIO for power. Is that so yep. with the yellow and orange wires? And the orange. Yep, the yellow and the orange. So if you go to my um, log, I have a photo gallery that I embedded that has, um, at the end of it, is down around February 16. I should just go take some pi photo gallery yeah whoa how'd um, you do that that's a good one what is that it's just yeah, this a, is great it's it's an html um oh yeah i just found like a a site that let me it puts the it puts the photos in all one at a time as html links but then it it piles them up into a photo gallery I didn't really uh, look is the source of those files on google drive in google photos yeah it's in google photos and so you don't you don't have any bandwidth on your or any yeah mm. no space taken up on the wiki because they're just links that's awesome man oh we got oh, this is how great to do that what, what let's see jsdeliver.net uh, probably was, where'd you find this can you uh, maybe document here. how you did that yep yep okay that'll be good huh okay so that's cool um okay so you got that yeah Okay, so I see the GPIO to power. Uh huh. Yeah, I could. I guess I could just share the the link too. Okay, now where is the data? Is it the bl the white, green, black wires? Yeah. The yes, the three wires to the kind of that go into the center of the board. I'm trying to see. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so so we're liberating all those USB connections. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you don't need USB cables there either. That that you you just need uh yeah three cell three wires to connect them or five. Yep. Five. Huh. Awesome. That's a five dollar capital gain right there. <laughs> <laughs> no that's uh, yeah, yeah so i tested that. i tested that and um you know powered it up used the touch screen um using awesome. the usb-c charger to supply the power to the board and it works how let's see the 
on the slide pi tablet linden photo archive so when you have the white gray purple wire the th triple wire yep uh, the header there, you wait. What did you do there? I soldered a header on. So I soldered to. I just took one of the headers that we had in, or I had laying around, or that yeah. came in one of the kits, and I cut yeah. it down to three pins, and I yeah. bent the pins ninety degrees at the end, and then I used those, used soldered that to the board so that I could pull the wires out easily. Um, wow. Well, uh, how solution, difficult? For test, that was really easy to solder. So okay. <laughs> um, I found that to be easier than trying to hold all the wires because the the pins you know the little the header plug just stayed stayed while i soldered it didn't really move well that's good okay so we got data what does it say there uh what are the labels on those pins what's it say on the back um if you it scroll down to like GMD. february february i don't remember <laughs> no all the way back to like january uh february 1st i think there, there's two close-up photos in my log of what the pins are labeled. Yeah, I see. Ground plus five, DNDP. Oh, yeah. DNDP. All right. Yep. And so that's a through hole that you can solder to, or yes, yes. Uh huh. I, I, I have no. I mean, I, I assume they're either for this use or they were to test those circuits once they soldered everything onto them. At, I don't know. Hmm. They work though. We check. I checked them for you know for continuity before I did anything, and it's like oh, it all checks out back to the USB plugs on the side of the board. Oh, wow. So, so we might as well just try it and see what happens. Well, so sounds like we have a wiring solution where that combined with Chris's design, that means, Chris, we got it. We just got to work out some detail, right? I think so. The it's the uh, power. Um, getting power is the last bit that I'm not. Uh, Sure about where, uh, but we are talking about either getting a uh, USB power pack that we can stick onto the back, and if that's fine. In fact, so that's the only the last thing I'm looking at right now is to uh, what another cutout in the back would be so that we could plug the power in either to the wall or with the power pack. But yeah, I think I think we have a pretty good plan. Okay, uh, can we go to page two of the working doc? So we got back a screen, we got the power pins, data three pins. Um, so let's see um, if I understand this correctly. So, and then uh, if we look at it, the pi is like right here. Is that about right? So that, uh, Jeremy, you see it? You see where I am? Yep, yep. Mm, wait, Anyone? no, you guys are on the working doc, which page? Page two. two. But, uh, yep, gotcha. Okay, there you go. So we got like the power pins like right in the corner there somewhere. The data is like right there or something. Um, Can you shift this around? The, the input is kind of right in the center of the board or where we have to start yeah. to. That's why I folded them over because I plan to have the pie sitting on top of that. Oh, so pie on top. Okay, pie on top. Okay. Um, so... I mean, if we do like an external battery pack, do we have, let's see, if we do the power, then can we do a little like a modified wire where we can plug into this using the power pins, the two power pins, right? We can just shred a, a USB cable for that and maybe mount it into the case so we plug in a battery pack into that. So... I was I was not able to find really good information on if you wanted if it was wise to feed the power back through the GPIOs. Um, so in my wiring, I was feeding power into the Pi, and then out of the GPIO pins to the to the screen. Um, I mean, it's all the same. It is the same circuit, so it shouldn't. You say okay. you want to go through the Pi. Well, I I. I just I don't really know. <laughs> uh -huh. I read and one one of the things I read was like it might be a bad idea to supply power to the Pi through the GPIO five. Right. Um, if we have no, um, the USB C, yeah. um, that's after the USB C plug and yeah, whatever safeguards yeah. are built into that regulator. 
Mm -hmm. Well, can we, what happens if we feed the battery and instead of GPIO, we feed it through the USB-C? Can we do that? That would be, a, yeah, I think that would be a so. good idea. Um, you need three and a half amps to run the Pi and the board, and that's like the bare minimum, or the Pi and the screen. So I had some battery packs laying around, but none of them were able to do three and a half amps at, on one USB plug. So. We're thinking the limit there is access to 3.5 amp battery packs. They they they're out there. Um, I just I had some real cheap okay. ones laying around, and none of them they were all like 2.1s. Where is a good place to post the link to how to do the photo album? In one of the wiki, like, usage documents, um, or? To the photo album? Yeah, like, this is highly relevant to the Raspberry Pi tablet, so put on a part library for the Raspberry Pi tablet, no? Okay. We have a page called Raspberry Pi Tablet, but it has a lot of the other non-essential stuff. Uh, we, from there, we have the Raspberry Pi Tablet part library where we get into our direct development. Um, I was looking for some battery packs. So let me see, Raspberry Pi. Or battery pack what do we find is it so if we find one that's 3.5 amps with the current geometry is it would we, we be able to feed it through the USB-C I would think so yeah so here let me show you again or where I was just uh, looking at how much space is um, in there right now as this current drawing is. And so to get into the back USB-C port, it would be some sort of cutout that would be like this, yeah. where it would be either an awkward angle that you'd stick the, the uh, cable in, um, or, uh, let's see. Hmm. Or, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Or we would use this space in here to try and fit an actual battery pack, like we're talking about. Can we try to mount like a can we go from a USB-C to a USB regular so that, okay, how do we make the interface between the battery pack and the USB-C? Maybe we can run a wire that goes into the case and there's a plug on the case that we plug in the battery pack too. So a uh, little mm. interface cable. Okay. Sure. That, that makes sense. Then we could get it into anywhere we want it to be on the board, and that yeah, would make yeah. us not have to do this uh, a cutaway thing, or, uh, yeah. Mm. So then we would just, yeah, get, like you're saying, an interface cable, some six inch thing that's just going to jump it from where it needs to be to somewhere on the edge of the board mm, that um, we could put any battery pack or yeah. the wall. Interface cable goes from USB-C to regular USB, so we can plug in any battery pack that has a USB connection. Yeah? Yeah. Now, would that be a, an interface, a USB-C to micro-USB uh, adapter, is what you're saying? Um, I don't know. Easier to come what's, what's common for battery packs? It would seem... Micro USB is the most that, that I've okay. seen personally. Okay. But these it's things that... that, that mm. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I, I guess I see a lot of them with just the standard, was it USB-A, like the, the larger plug on the one end for the output side, and the input side is always micro USB. Mm. Or the charge side. 
Mm -hmm. The charge side to a device? Uh, the output, the power out is usually your standard USB plug. I think this is at type A, like the the big ones that are on the Pi. That's output power to, and usually the other side of that cable is a mini USB. Yeah, let's find a battery pack. Let's find a battery yeah. pack. Mine is my, my two are you might go USB anyway. Uh, or the plug itself will have a USB A that you you know that you put your connector in, but you know. Uh, yeah. So here's um. You see the two A ports there are your power outputs. Yes. Why not? Oh yes. The center port. Is I see. So I'm just thinking if we get an off the shelf battery pack, we're probably going to have that USB A as the somehow we're going to have to feed that power back to the board or to the Pi. I see what you're saying. Well, so if we had um. So that one out has an output jack at, at, a, at a, as a USB A, but then you would just get it, you would pair it with a cable that would have USB A to could be any USB C or micro USB yeah. or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah. Or we could, I mean, it doesn't even. I mean, we just need the right ends, right? <laughs> yeah. We come out with an A and and go to wires. It doesn't even need to be a cable. We just need to get it to a C plug on the other end. Mm-hmm. So I guess the question is, what would we be looking to plug into this thing to to power it, not to charge it, just to just to run it? Um, right. So I I kind of think you know it, it would be best to just get a if we're going to use an external battery pack, find one that has a C input. Um, just because I think C is probably going to have more. It's going to have more amps. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't read through any of the standards or anything, so this is all just kind of guesswork. Yeah. The nice thing about if we get a C pack is that if you want to then use the you know the wall charger or if you change anything, there's no. It's just switch the cable around and keep going. Yeah, that's true. If you want to go to wall power. I, I, yeah, depends how accessible the internal port is where the where the Pi is being powered from. And I guess accessibility. I'm just looking for a small. It should be as small as possible. Six six inch might be the smallest we can find of a USB C male to female you know jumper. USB C but, to C uh, male to female. Yeah. That way we can mount the female end on a wall and put the male uh, into a, end of the pie. But they look kind of expensive. Hmm? Wall, you mean case? Yes, yes, case. Case. Okay. Um, the female, C, C female would go on a case. Yeah, on the edge of the case so that yep. um, we could plug yep. uh, a battery pack or wall in, yeah. What if you just find the plugs without the cable? Because it's, are they, those are probably out there. Yeah. Um, then we can basically hmm. get them. Oh, to... just wire? Yeah, it's just four That's wires. That's much cheaper. That's, That's some, yeah. There, if you're just doing power, yeah. you only need two wires. Yeah. And this is like 99 cents versus $15 for, for just the um, uh, terminal jumper uh, component instead of the actual whole cable. It's more fun that way too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree. So um, I'm assuming there's got to be a place in the Raspberry Pi um, to wire power directly and still go through all that safety. Um, there may be, but mm -hmm. I didn't find it. Oh. Sounds like no. The only way you get access to that is through USB-C. Then we're talking about making our own uh, cable of getting male terminal and a female terminal and just soldering it together. Uh, for the Why C? Not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can yeah, you paste in a, just, a, just a plug without wires? Does anyone have? Yeah. 
so I put a link to that one battery pack. Let's see, would that work? That's 20 bucks. Oh, there you go. Let's see, is that, t oh, are you going to be able to solder to it or is it too tiny? Mm -hmm. Can you put a link to that? Yeah, I'm just on eBay. Here is, here's a couple of, uh, where's a good spot to dump these links? Working dock? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I'm just going to put my, this ugly link in the comment here. Uh, so here's, uh, mm. this looks yeah, like I this can, has solder pads. Just FYI, I can, you can uh, click on that picture there and click. Oh, I see. Oh, cool which I'm doing right now. Apply. Yeah, so now if you click on it, it's got the link underneath. God, awesome. Okay, USB-C terminal jumpers. <laughs> okay, so it's a dollar versus... Oh, man, 20 cents versus $15. You check yeah, check the shipping there on the Alibaba. Oh, true. Sure. Oh, from China, yeah. Were, it might, uh, it might ca come with some disease as a bonus. <laughs> I'll delete it. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, but definitely some to. I'm sure we can find something. The good thing about this too is it's uh, it would be so much more compact than any cable we'd buy. Yeah. Yeah. No jacket. No insulation. None of the none of the the jacket around the plug. That's always yeah. That's always a pain. We could make them right angle. You know, a sharp angles. Whatever we whatever yeah. we need. Let's see. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, YouTube soldering to a C type connector. Uh, this is type C connector. And uh, this is uh, enameled. Wire. Would it make sense if we're going to solder power there to just so take power so off of that plug for the board or for the board? one way and for the screen at the same time as opposed to having to pass the power all the way through the pie. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Then yeah. You don't even have to mess around with the GPIO for that. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so a solder job instead of another connector. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, Oh, 
let's see, as base. Uh, if you look at that video at Let's see, is that as bad as it gets? If okay, if you look at that video I put on the next page at like 30 seconds from the end. Doesn't look fun, but but we need only power, so maybe we, it will be easier for us. Oh, my. <laughs> Wait, is that a bad video? Let's see. We, it's not good. Let's see. The solder pads looked a lot. Yeah, let's see what's going on. Um, okay, okay, I see other stuff. Let's see. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some that have a little solder pad on the back, like a little tiny circuit board. With the, uh, ah, yes. The is, yes, yes. The plug is already on a board with solder pads. Yep. So that's probably what we want to go. Okay. And it's still <laughs> doable. I see one for a dollar fifty. USB 3.0 Type-C. Let me copy that. Okay. Yeah, with a little solder pad, okay. Yeah, here, I'll put the AliExpress like that. Put that one. Yeah, and depending on how those mountains are the case, you know, we may or may not need the rear jacket even. Is it USB C or three? Are they the same? Three out one. No, they're probably two different. Oh, did we lose Chris? Did we? Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm seeing... Um, I like it, so we split the cable. USB-C on edge of high case.
trying to find a diagram that shows if, if we're going to solder those data connections back to the Pi board with which pins we need. What are you trying to find? Say it again. Um, on the board, we're going to have to pick pick up the pins on the underside of that USB um, port if we're going to leave all the all of the existing USB ports exposed to the exterior of the case. We're going to have to solder the two data lines, um, the DN and the DP. I think that's what they are. Since the first time we talked, the instructable list of Pi projects has grown quite a bit. So I did put a couple of links to a couple of uh, to the whole list in the bottom here of the Pi. Um, in a working doc. Yeah, uh, yeah, the part library. Oh, part library. Um, there's one fairly substantial tablet project where he, I mean, he did a. There's a lot of cutting and soldering and pulling pins off the board and. So I think he may actually have the information. Is that the third link, pi4binstructables.com? Yes. Yeah, that pi4b instructionals. He, they got he got pretty carried away in this. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> they went all out. Who is this guy? What's the date on this thing? Do you see a date? Let me um, see. YouTube video date. Maybe on the uh, submission. February 2020. This that's recent. February 2020. Yeah, yeah. He just he just posted it because it wasn't here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Or maybe three weeks ago. Uh, is he using open source tool chains there, or, or is he all? Not really. I didn't didn't dig into it too much. Mm -hmm. Take a look at that. No GPL. All right. Well, let's see. Why don't we just copy like, man, that seems to be very well refined. Why, why don't we just copy that? Let's see. What's missing from his? Oh, wow. He doesn't have the camera stuff. Um, but he, it's really involved because he's oh. pulling he's pulling a lot of components off the circuit board um, right at the beginning. All the USB stuff comes loose. Um, oh man! Come taking it off the screen too. 
Yeah, pulling parts off of the screen circuit board. It's a different screen than we have. I think it's actually it's the Raspberry Pi screen, and I think it's a little bit lower resolution, if I remember right. It was one of the things why uh -huh. the screen we used was, was a bit better. Let's see what he's using there. 7-inch. Wait, it says official Raspberry Pi 1080p camera front-facing, but is it V1? Oh, is the camera in there? I didn't see what yeah. it integrated in the case. 1080 p official Raspberry Pi 1080p camera front facing. Uh -huh. Holy cow, he's got accelerometer. Yeah, he's got, I mean, it's a full on. It's huh. it's really involved. It's kind of a neat project. Looks like a he put well, a lot of work into it. Let's see. Okay, if this let's see let's evaluate what this I mean, he is GPL. What, who is this guy? How to create a CA certificate. We're going to be using OpenSSL in order to create that certificate. From that certificate, we're then going to create a machine certificate. This is the one that we apply to our Astros PBX. And Holy cow, this guy looks really good. It's GNU GPL. He's, uh, he's interested in telephony, Linux, asterisk, electronics, DIY development, home automation, cloud computing. Okay, this guy we need to contact. Well, his license is GNU GPL. I want to see, uh, I'll talk to him. Okay. Is that listed at the top, or I didn't... Which part? The, the, li the licensing, is it? The license is, he's got a repo at the video. So look wow. at the video in the description of the video. He's got his GitHub repo, mm -hmm. and it's GNU GPL. This guy appears to be for real. Yeah. License, there's a license. Yeah, 13 You like it? Yeah, it's it's a neat it's neat it's. This would be one of the like for a, like a five, if we wanted to do another five day. Right. You know. Okay. Just because the the build is fairly involved. Yeah. I didn't watch the whole video. I read through the list and I was like, yeah, this is. There's some time here. Oh man. Okay. Well, holy cow. I'm looking at it. It looks like the video is pretty comprehensive. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Huh. Let's see. Okay, he's not using FreeCAD, but okay. We can address that readily. He's got the <laughs> STLs. I want to see what. Let's see what the screen is. You said the screen is not the same as ours. And let's see. Uh, um, I was looking at some screens early on when we first ran into the wiring issue, and I thought the screen we had was higher in resolution than this one. Although the price is about the same. Five to ten bucks. Uh huh. Let me take a look at his. Uh... Pine juice. Pie juice so the, power hat. The touch screen here, did you pull that up yet? I'm looking for it still. 
Can you send a link? I, I can't find it. Where is it? Amp, yeah. Um, I'll put it in the working doc. I'm, I have the video chat on a different, on my tablet, so I can't really type into that. Uh, page two of the working doc, I just put um, an Amazon link. Amazon is saying it's only 800 by 480. Okay. Let's see. And I, I'm sure ours was. No, ours is. That much better. More. more. Eight hundred. Yeah, ours is ten, ten twenty-four by six hundred, so significantly higher resolution. Huh. Why did he use that one? Let's see. It's because of the um. You see the ribbon cable there coming yeah. out. That integrates right down to the to the board. So there's a major um, space saving. Oh. Going on as far as cabling goes. And that, that ribbon cable has your touch inputs and your power and your uh, HDMI all on the one cable. Oh, wow. And it it's yeah. attached to a break? How do you attach it to a breakout? Is that attached directly to the Pi? So, yeah, the Pi has a DSi port right here. One is for the camera and one is for the Pi monitor or the Pi screen. And one of those and DSIs, that's where you plug in that cable? Yeah, so one of the DSI goes to the to the Pi screen. Let's see if you, there's yeah that you know the one of the downsides is the screen has to have that extra circuit board bolted to it. But like in his video, he goes ahead and just makes that thing almost flat. So what extra board? Uh, there's an extra little board that comes with the screen is sitting out there to the right. That's like a that's like the video driver board. Okay. It's the equivalent of our of the printed circuit board on the back of our screen, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know, man. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and if this is so well developed, I'm like, and it's GPL, it meets our spec. What's missing that we shouldn't just copy that and go down to the in screen resolution just for now? Um, yeah, and I just I did, I. I was wondering the same thing initially, especially on the screen, because that DSi cable solved a lot of our cabling issues. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it is a little bit res less resolution, although on a small screen, seven inches, you know, that might not be a significant difference for most people. I suspect Raspberry Pi will come out with another official screen that is probably the same form factor, but higher resolution at some point as well. Yeah. I can't imagine them changing that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it is a big mess in the back, but I mean, oh, <laughs> yeah. But if you but are, it's doable, right? Like it's all it's all developed already, and the instructions are here. And... Well, I mean, it's that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, you look at the the wiring and a say like fifty five at minute fifty five twenty, which is a hairball, but that's no different than the three D printer controller. Yep. Which is very manageable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would take you time to just cut those wires, but no, it's like just regular, not so super. I mean, he, it's it's all out because it's got a sound card in it, and it's got speakers, and it's got microphones, and the gyroscope, and I did I did not price any of this out, so I have no right. idea what that would be. Okay, yeah, cost. so price price will be there. Um, I suspect there's a there's a fair bit of hardware here that we can do the quick rough run through his Amazon links and just see what the total is. <laughs> Plan B. Get him as an instructor. And then sure, that'd can, be sweet. <laughs> then, then run. The pie's bigger.
and it's, it kind of fits the profile so he's a software guy and this is a side project so it's not that's why he's open source he's cross subsidizing it and that's what we need It just amazes me how cheap the Pi hardware is at the end of the day. The components are, there's just not a lot of dollars tied up in them. It, it is affordable? Well, just look, I'm just look as I go through the list of components here, I think it's. So there are other, there are a couple of other touch screens out there, maybe? Mm-hmm. Um, I may have read this wrong. Oh, it's not a touch, oh, yeah, it's not a touch screen, okay. That's probably. problem. So I wonder why it was so cheap. Mm-hmm. Do you recall, did you get just a Raspberry Pi B with four gigs of RAM? Does yeah. that sound right for what we had in the first kit? Yeah. $60, 60 or what, did you have a better? 55 price? yeah. Yes, there's there's some issue like the the pie juice thing appears to be discontinued. Oh, I didn't notice that. That's in the comments and the uh, out of stock. Oh, so that's kind of a no go. It says it says they're supposed to have it in March here on the top, but I didn't really read through anything. Mm -hmm. So I just pulled up the list of stuff that he linked via Amazon. Mm -hmm. I ended up at about $240, $250. Um, that doesn't include the really little stuff like some of the wires and mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, the sense will be the source because we have a couple of added price fans and uh, or the piece of wood he's got for the backing. Yeah, so 242 mm-hmm. is what I came up with. Yeah. With that, I was a little extrapolating on a few things that on Amazon for a single one, you know, they want four bucks, but I know you, you have access to them for a lot cheaper than that, things like that. The USB breakouts and the little press buttons on Amazon, they come in kits of like 50 or 100. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, to, I, to me, that's, that's not bad. Yeah. It's quite a bit more, but it's quite a bit more functionality than we were going for, too. Well, the the Pi that we have, that ended up being like 200 as well. Yeah. So it's like 40 bucks more or so. Yeah, so similar price. Um, now there's a couple of things. So one is the why is it say uninstructable that has a up there it says buy NCSA attribution non-commercial share alike. Um, oh, the Creative Commons, the little tiny link above the video. Yeah. That's probably a. That's instructables. I bet you that's an instructables thing. Mm-hmm. Because he he clearly in his Git, you know, obviously the Git link is yeah. Is totally open source. Yeah. So, um, I wonder if in his YouTube channel if he has anything like that. Mm-hmm. Let's see this pie juice. Yeah, thing. he's got. Yeah. Everything just links back to his GitHub page. Yeah, so we seem to be okay. Okay. I'm sure, I would guess, yeah. I would say that is probably Instructables because it's in the same line as the download and favorite buttons on the other side of the screen. So that's probably them putting a mm-hmm. Creative Commons on, on this instructional, not necessarily on the Git library because I can't imagine they could do that. Yeah, he's even got some of the software, you know, programs that you need to, uh, uh, services you need to load up. It's it's all here. Mm Mm-hmm. Are we concerned about Pi Juice? Um, yeah, we should probably look through that. The thing that's good about our deal is that we kind of have full control to to modularity and scalability, whereas we we just got a little bit less control like that with the other one, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of like. Yeah, it was the 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 process we started. You know, we had some very, you know, nice in features that we were planning to incorporate at some point. And yes. So that kind of helped inform the initial design a lot, like the battery pack. You know? Yeah. Let's figure out how we can integrate this at some point with a, you know, an open source, um, you know, cheap batteries type of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That isn't expensive. Yeah. If we do his route, it's pretty much getting canned into that's it. And it's like, okay, that re- doesn't really meet our longer term goals, right? Mm-hmm. Not that we can't take a few of the things, like, you know, maybe it is worth it to switch to that screen mm-hmm. um, in the long run to reduce the cabling size. And it's pretty easy, apparently, to take these, uh, to take all the USB ports off your board if you want to shrink it by another 5 or 10 millimeters. 
Yeah, if you watch the video, that, that seemed to be not a problem, or is it a dangerous operation? Uh, he just has a very small, like, uh, side cutters that he slides under there and just peels the shields off and then snips all the, snips all of the, um, pins. Mm-hmm. So, I would say pretty, pretty standard, um, didn't even have to, like, heat up the solder on some of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe we could borrow some ideas, but probably, yeah, continue going with with ours. What is the deal with the Paijus thing? Is it just a good... I mean, what do you get out of it that you don't get with our route? Well, yeah, I was just trying to look through that and decide, you know, where where that sits and why. So I'm not the same question. I think it was the convenience of uh, feeding power. That it's a hat. Yeah, fe feeding power as a hat, not through... I mean, I kind of like our discussion of the little USB thing that we can now add any battery pack. That's that's attractive, right? Yeah, yeah, because it doesn't matter. And if the th if it goes dead and you access that port from the outside and you're using a battery pack out there, it's just like, oh, I have another one here. Let's just switch them. Done. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and his his route is he's using a lot of the the wiring he's just plugging into headers, so it's not. Oh yeah, so it's actually quite tractable. Wait, does he have like two Raspberry Pis in the one case? No, there's only one Pi. Another board is that flat board is. There's a board. Interface for the screen. The flat board. Yeah. Yep. There's an interface board for the screen. Um, that high juice. Here's the section. Hmm. Wow. So, so the big advantage of that other screen is, is just the tightness of the cabling, right? Yeah. It's a rib It's that ribbon cable, and it's got, you know its own mount point on the board. Mm-hmm. That's separate from the other two um, HDMI outs. And my thought on that is, okay, so this is kind of a, my, my great use case for this is mm. to use it to like take it and do a presentation with it. And so you have these HDMI outs. Mm. And if you use the Pi screen, you're not, you don't need those uh, HDMIs to run your touch screen. And so if you could leave them exposed to the edge of the case, and all of a sudden, you know, with one cable, you can plug into a projector or a screen or two screens even um, yeah. to do a presentation or to at least have all of your, you know, information you brought right there with you on a tablet that you can, you know, just pick up and mm. walk off with when you're done. That's the advantage of the the other Pi screen. Yes, if you use the Pi, the official Pi screen, so you don't. If you don't use the HDMI's that are, you know, like if you leave the HDMI's available. Then you can you could move those to the outside of the case, either with a jumper cable or or get the Pi board itself mounted near the edge, um, so you could run a monitor with it then too. Hold on a second, so Which are to you? To me, that's like a that's a huge advantage for a tablet because I you know none of my tablets or phones or anything that I've had like you just don't yeah. plug those into a TV and use them like a computer. So yeah. Um. 
so the Raspberry Pi 7 and so you're saying the one with the ribbon theirs allows that more easily or no? I uh, yeah, I think the, the the one with the ribbon cable the the you're liberating Raspberry Pi 7 inch screen. You're liberating those two HDMI ports off that one side to be yeah. then placed wherever you need them to because you're not constrained by your cable. But then if we use our old route, we still have one HDMI available, right? Yeah, if we leave it available, if we leave it if, to the, if we can find a way to put it in the case that way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is still, like, that was my, you know, my chunky case design was all about leaving that one HDMI out so that I could take this with me to give, you know, if I'm teaching or presenting somewhere and just plug it right into the monitor or projector. No, that would be good. That would be good. Um... So what would you suggest for this time around? I I think I think because it's only a couple of weeks away, we stick with where we're at and the progress yeah. we've made. I don't know if it's worth the change. I think, right. but is there six or eight weeks between this and the next class? I think maybe immediately following the end of this class, we could have that discussion with the you know, with the other instructors on if they want to change. Yeah. Well, interesting, interesting. Um, now, why didn't we run into this? Why didn't, I didn't run into this. Is this like a new screen? Or this has been around for a long time? Because I didn't really run into this. I don't know. Or maybe I just I look didn't look hard enough. I know it's the official screen. For a long time, there was smaller. They had the... I don't know if the 7-inch screen has been out through that long. Hey Chris. Hey guys, so, so sorry about that. Um, um, I dropped my own part back up. Yep. I'm reviewing your uh, updates now. Yep. Um, yeah, so we looked at this this, ass, this other thing, other Pi project pl on plan B, uh, slide 3 looks really good actually and it uh, seems to be open source but too complicated to shift right now to that um, now with 800 I so, uh, yeah cool oh you got I got all excited about it and it's also GNU GPL so it looks pretty good it's but we would ah, it's just a fortunately I don't think I mean to, to modify it like we want to I think the cool part about ours is that we actually have some stuff to design uh, and modify later. We'd be reduced to certain choices using this option. So we're saying save it for the next time. I see. And it, if I understand correctly, this could be it. We would be able to drop this in later in between plug type C female and plug type C male this connector here, it could just go in line between those two, anywhere in the case, and you, uh, right. No, um, not I think we're on two separate pages. Yeah. You're on page three? Yeah, check out the Instructables, uh, it's a super involved build of a Pi tablet. Oh. Uh, Plan B. Yeah, I think yeah we don't do it for now. Let's see. We sh we could um, kind of do a matrix of comparison. Like, I mean, definitely like it doesn't get you the battery flexibility. It doesn't look like um, because it's so highly engineered. Like now to re-engineer it, you pretty much have to probably like start from scratch in some way. Um, 
Now, I wonder if the resolution of that screen matters so much because I know that when I tried the, I didn't use the fullest resolution because it was just super high. Um, yes, too hard high. to read on the tiny screen. Yeah. So actually, I think probably using the the Plan B screen may be actually quite good, given advantage of the cable. Hmm. Should we try to just incorporate the new screen right now? Uh, so if we incorporate the new screen, yeah, we save all of the soldering um, to the main screen that we're going to do with the screen we have. So okay. that simplifies that a lot. Um, you know, power, USB, and and the HDMI are all on that DSi cable. So I vote if, if we're going to switch screens, it's only a few dollars difference in cost. Um, mm -hmm. It drastically simplifies the electronics work we need to do and we can then you know let participants focus on design yeah man and what so we're gonna scrap our old screens well i'm be. i yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna make it work <laughs> we're so close on on it yeah, right yeah, now right. word hmm wow we're running into legacy Integrated issues in. but so for this camp should we just say no, I think like if we're going to be building massive amounts, like you know, go forward, we probably do want to switch to the simpler to wire up, right? Yeah. Um, if we evaluate closely, what what steps need to be done? Like that, those little resoldering jobs, it kind of adds up, right? The cable makes it much easier. Mm -hmm. I'm asking about that. You think that's fair to say? Yeah, I do. I think that's. Yeah. No, so <laughs> okay. Well, and you you eliminate a lot of the risk of somebody you know not you know you got a rookie solderer and they they heat that thing up a whole bunch and now all of a sudden their screen doesn't work. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's that's a that's a definite reason to, <laughs> to do it, huh? Now, in terms of the form factor for for what you're using, does it does it match? The case that we already started designing, or, or it's a little different. I, I, it's going to be a little bit different, but I don't think Not it's going to be. I can get the, I can get all the dimensions. Yeah, so. man. If we avoid that fat HDMI cable there, that's a big deal. Um, yeah, the HDMI cable is the, yeah, plus the soldering. Like to me, it's a, yeah. it's kind of a slam dunk if we, if we switch screens. Yeah. Okay, so let's slam dunk and switch screens. Chris, what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so that's that's this Amazon link. Uh, yeah, it's it's the official Pi seven inch screen. It's a, I think on the Amazon link in there. It's a couple. Uh, it's not the I very see. First item, if I remember right. I see. Yeah, I mean, uh, simplification of assembly it makes sense, and it's 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 a couple dollars difference, only. Yeah. I think five. What did you recall? What we paid for the screens, Martin? Yeah, it was, it was still a, like sixty. Yeah. Yeah, this they're sixty four right now on Amazon. Now, does this work only on the new Pi or on on any Pi? Uh, I don't know about that. Good question. Because so, um, so far, as far as software goes, I actually have two Pis going in this. Uh, so I have a, a Pi two that is able to run um, uh, Legacy OS, the uh, uh, Android. Uh, OS, and whereas the uh, newer Pi 4 can run Linux, but it's not able to run uh, Android yet. But anyway, minor cons minor consideration of. So, I mean, so I do think the, we should. Um, so, mm -hmm. Do the older Pi oh, have that sorry. DSi connector? Um, this is basically uh, the same connector as what the camera has. Let me check. I got them both here. I kind of uh, doubt it, but. Oh wait, no, the other one's back at the shop. Yeah, probably not. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, Pi Four is, is what definitely what we're going to be going with. Like. So uh, that would make uh, that would make sense to me. Um, moving to this new one, that would be for for everyone at the all the new participants would be getting this. You'd have to order extra kits though for all the. Uh, for teachers that, you know, I could reuse obviously the components I have already uh, with the old screen. 
yeah, we might want the new screen. But we'd have to dev the components. I mean, the case that we, we got, I could start working on uh, dev for, of the case as it's currently outlined with the components that we have and then try and retrofit it when the new stuff arrives. Uh, but. Yeah, no, maybe, I don't know, maybe we continue this. Yeah, because cause same here, like, we don't have those screens with us and the days are running. Should we maybe, mm -hmm. I, I think definitely we want to switch to this for the next one, maybe for this one, just continue with the old one? Or or is the benefit so overwhelming? Yeah, I mean, it would be easiest to put, it would be easiest to pull together a minimum viable build uh, with what we have uh, for the current for the upcoming camp probably mm. unless we decided right now and got the new parts on order uh, because but at the same time um, right, uh, keeping in mind immediately that we're going to be making this change we'll finish the M uh, minimum viable product with the current components. Um, Functional, and then at the same time, be getting these next components and modifying it uh, to smooth over should not should be easy. It should not be very difficult. Yeah, moving over wouldn't be too difficult. I think maybe. So for the question of timing, yeah. So what do we say? Leave it at this one. Leave it at the old screens. Um, I would say so. This is a different pie that's in the picture too, but well, there's a there's a board on on the screen that's separate. Oh, it's I see. The, it's just a circuit board for the screen. Mm -hmm. So we would have to. I see. But I'm still seeing how our this 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 case design we've been talking about today would would work around this same uh, mm -hmm. thing. So, so intriguing. So I would be fine with you know I could go forward with the existing components that we have. Uh, when is your final order date uh, for, well, the we, current, for the coming well, camera? Yeah, so that, that kind of stuff we can drop ship to the locations. So it would be like uh, one week from now? Yeah. Hmm. So I don't know. I would be nervous to try and to, to plan on switching over to this in case there's something we, we just missed here. Right, we're all familiar yeah. with with That's this. True. I'm I'm in agreement if that we can go with the hardware we have. I think with the short time period that makes sense. Yeah. Now Mar you can order Martin, you can order one of this one of these new screens and play with it uh, over there and see if we can uh, you know retrofit and see how it's how it's gonna work um, better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But we, we have already eight copies or something of this of the current kit out there. Yeah. I think we should definitely get at least eight good eight solid tabs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say so. And yeah, and Jeremy, like you said, the the soldering is not particularly onerous to get it right. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. So the the one the best person in the group who's soldering can the most you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think there we was room on that board that I was able to slide like a real thin like a putty knife as like a heat barrier so that I didn't overheat anything else you can get that underneath there to where that pad's at so mm -hmm. and I, I think i slid a small piece of like paper or cardboard into the other one because it was right in the middle of the board like my putty knife wasn't long enough okay yeah mm -hmm. okay well that's i mean okay that's that's confusion for now but that's actually positive progress for the future which... yeah i agree okay okay so that's much keep... more compact mm -hmm. yeah Okay, so let's let's keep rolling the way. What are our conclusions for then moving the the way we are? So we're gonna look at the USB C on edge of Pi case. We're gonna get one of those those USB three connectors with the little circuit board, so we can solder to that readily. Uh, and tr so try to integrate. So Chris, yeah, like on this, I, I move the yeah. slide. So slide three with the check, the the green check mark. Use something I like see. that, where we can solder readily, and that then we can build that into the case, so that we can plug. Wait, let's see. Would the battery packs? Yeah, the battery packs would have the. 
you know, if we want to go super duper, we can go have one USB C and even do another length one that's USB B for other battery packs. Let's see. So the battery pack that's that we can select is that one that I put in there. Does that look like a good one? It's twenty bucks. It's it says it's a Pi Four B battery pack. And let's see what's it got for the connector. Huh. It's twenty one bucks. Let's see. Might look a little bit. Wait, what's it say? Hmm. It seems pretty compact as well. Yeah. Micro yeah. USB. They say it can do three amps. Which should be enough. Um, Maybe. We better get one and test it. Where's the output? So I know that the Pi needs like two and a half amps to boot. And the screen is like another 700 to 900 milliamps if it's running. Which is right. why when we powered the screen via USB, I don't know if you guys did this, but if you powered the screen via the USB and you tried to boot the Pi and the screen at the same time, it would just hang because it didn't have enough power to boot. I did notice that and was wondering why that was the case. And what? if you just unplug the screen, it would boot, and you could actually plug the screen in after it booted, and then it would yeah. run it. But um, when you power it over the GPIO pins, it's fine. Okay. So. Now that's that's one battery just, pack, but... but um, in our route, yeah, we can I get think... any battery pack, right? Yeah, that's true. We so, just, I, just, I think we need three and a half amps. <laughs> Let's see. So, how about I'm looking at one? Well, how about? Okay, so what does it say? There's a comment in here that says it's for high amp loads above 2.5, so maybe it does. Two amp, five volt. No, that's not a good one. Five volt, three amp. Let's maybe, instead of looking for Raspberry Pi, let's see USB battery pack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for example, I want to don't look at Pi. Here's one that came up right away for 4.5 amps, 26 bucks. I think, Is there okay. one discharge or two? With what? Is there one discharge port or two? I, one two. of the things I ran into is there was lots of packs that were rated for 3.5 amps or 3.1, but one of the plugs was rated for 1 amp and the other one was rated for 2.1. <laughs> ah. And so you could get 3.1 out of the pack, but you had to be running two cables out of it. I see. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, let's see, can we combine the two outputs the way we're... <laughs> well, we could make a custom cable where we just combine them both, no? Or, <laughs> yeah. or, or do they fight each other? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, this one says total current of 4.5 amps, which means probably 2.2 .2 each or something.
I see so a lot of them just happen most of them happen to have like two two outputs and they share the output power oh here's one that's let's see what's this say Why do a lot of these individual packs not say the amount of max amperage? Well, I guess the one that says like 4.5 total current, we can, so say one there's 26 bucks, just combine the outputs, no? I would think that would work because the voltages are all the same and, you know, it's just going to draw what it needs. It should work, you'd have to test it, yeah. Yeah, those are outputs, so it's not like it's going to try to feed power from... It's not like there's two batteries. It should be all from one battery. Yeah, it'll be the same battery set, but going through two different charge controllers. No, um, power controllers, yeah. Yeah, it could be. I can tell you this. When you take two 12-volt power supplies that run off AC, you blow mm -hmm. them up if you try to connect them together. <laughs> but this is running from DC. The charge, the, the circuits there are different, so I don't know. But we should be able to combine the two USBs. In which case, so I'm seeing one for like 20 bucks that's got uh, 27 amp hours that's pretty good yeah no that's 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 a pretty long life um, Because each um, 18650 cell, that's like 3 amp hours, right? Or is that what it was? 
think it was yeah power three number. amp hours so we had like 15 this claims to have like 27 it's interesting reviews are pretty good yeah um yeah i guess so we should we should definitely test get one asap and test it to see if we could power the pi um yeah and i have a what is this one rated for i think it's rated for two So I can do some testing with the one I have here. Rated for two Just twice? No, it's rated for 1.5 amps on the one plug and 2.1 amps on the other one. So together I should be at, what, 3.6? <laughs> do you have uh, I'll find some out, cables? I'll find out if it... Uh, if it if it goes if it catches on fire when I hook them up together, <laughs> <laughs> you want to do that before I buy this then? <laughs> yeah, I can do that this afternoon. Okay, why don't you do that and see if you blow it up or not? Um, <laughs> yeah. well, okay, let's Put see. My just face th shield on. okay, thinking about a little bit, um, what's the likely thing to happen? So if it has batteries, same batteries that provide power, but has two different power circuits. When you combine the output, if it's DC, it's probably switched. It's probably switch mode DC, but coming from a similar power, uh, from a similar voltage. So the question would be like, are you feeding power back, yeah. back from one to the other, and does that mess it up? Do you have any insight on that? Well, let's let's Google this. Can uh, can you combine? <laughs> That's where I just am at. <laughs> Can I combine the outputs of a power bank? <laughs> Did you just Google it? Yeah, there's there's answers here, so I'm starting to read. Hey, yeah, I, unfortunately, I gotta go um, take care of some stuff. But uh, okay, I uh, so I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep following on. In fact, I might just leave this on. I just gotta do some work, but I might leave it on loud uh, so I can still listen in. Yeah, um, I'm gonna get, get some case files up uh, ASAP uh, into the part library of the design that we're talking about, so we can start that testing on, on a print. Yeah, see if we can print that out, and then uh, our last okay. frontier is getting the power pack. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it as as a, net, a hole for an external power, and we'll figure out, you know, and then we'll we'll meet in the middle. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Sounds good. T take okay. Care. Take care. Yeah. Uh, so. Jeremy, yeah, let's move on that. And you know, we we're trying to get an off off the shelf battery pack, but I mean, we might you know we might just go back to our original idea with the eighteen six fifty cells ourselves because we did have the the charger. The wait, were we running them? No, we were we weren't using our battery bank that we made ourselves. But we can always go back to that with a with a charge, with basically the the circuit that we need the we the little blue circuits that we had those were the for the power right they were they were good for like four amps or something or i think they were acceptable so yeah yeah we'll have to we'll have to figure it out but between that i think we can move i mean we'll figure out something for the battery let's see if the the existing ones work and then just continue on a case and yep see how far we can right. get but no, that's that's good progress on yeah getting that next screen just to simplify the wiring. I think that's good for next time around. But for now, just do do the screens we already have. Okay. Yeah, I'll work on the power here, the power issue. See if I can't. We'll see what runs off the battery pack. See how many amps we actually need. Yep. And then um, there is a couple of Google hits for how to combine this or what's going to happen. So if okay. I need to do that, I'll try it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So Anything we'll else touch. I need to deliver? Or? No, I think that's it. Yeah, if we just continue on the power power delivery, we Chris is going to continue on the case, and we got to integrate that so we have <clears throat> all the parts. We've got a week until we have to drop ship, so we still have a little bit of time. Okay. Do we want to talk about this? Are we having a call next week, or? Well, yeah. So do we want to have a call prior? Let's let's keep in touch. We're definitely meeting on Friday, right? So. Yep. At least then. The point, but if yeah. we have any solutions before that, um, we can communicate on email. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, and okay. have a good evening. Okay, Jerry. Well, thank you. Uh, good work. We'll continue this. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.